The guy who claims he can do it all and can't, okay, is of far less value than the man who can look you in the eye and say, you know what, I, I know that I can do this because I know that I can't do that. So I can tell you about any, sh any shadow of a doubt because I know I can't do that, I know I can do this. That's what the world needs more of. That's a real man. So this week, and uh, you can bring it up there, uh, Garrett. Uh, for those who didn't follow earlier, I was subject to my first auto accident as a as a passenger, I should say. Uh, when I was a kid, I was hit by a car once. Ooh. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, I, I know that story. Yeah, yeah, look, the whole dashboard just exploded. Airbags. Ooh. Those were not uh, friendly highway. airbags, by the way. Yeah, it was, it was a t highway. tire blue on an older Jeep. We we're exiting on a loop from one freeway to another. It's hard for me to explain, but basically, here's a freeway. You need to get on this freeway, okay? And there's a loop. And the loop comes around to get on this freeway. And then there are only two lanes where you're one. And basically, these two lanes, one lane is trying to get over on it's this other freeway, the freeway that goes totally. east-west, and the other one, people are trying to get over on another loop that goes downward, going north-south. And I have, I've had to, to, to do this exit many times. I've always thought it was incredibly dangerous. So when the tire blew while we were take, I, I, I obviously, I, I panicked. Uh, now looking at it now, it doesn't look so bad, thank God. And it really was not as bad as it could have been. Um, we're fortunate that actually, ironically, the complete spin-out of, of the car I, which could potentially increase the force of the... We went into the concrete girder. Oh, yeah. I think yeah. caused it to scrape a little bit, which cradled... Saved you a little bit. ...the, the, the crash. Um, the, I mean, the frame is totaled. Frame I is heard totaled. concrete. I was like, oh, Oh, man, yeah, the frame the is wall. completely... Oh, well, it's a, a Jeep with a but, metal bumper, and the oh, bumper's so completely broken. The absorbed. steel frame completely cracked, bent. Uh, so uh, and it breaks my heart because Johnny Boy, who was driving, yes. loves that Jeep. But it could have been a lot worse. Thank God he's fine. He'll get another Jeep. So I say this to explain to you what happened, and to let you know that I understand that this isn't exactly a scrape with death as many car accidents could be. But at the time, I didn't know that. So at that moment in time, feeling the tire blow out in one of the most difficult loops in Texas, all I knew was just pop, spin, screech, and with each spin, I can just see two lanes behind us, the two lanes, which one of which is going very, very fast, and yeah. the other people are coming in on a blind loop, and then spin, 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 spin at concrete girder, spin, 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 cars going by, uh, and it felt like they were getting faster, uh, and, and the concrete girder was getting faster as it came into view. I, I thought it might be, I really thought it might be curtains. In retrospect, no. But it's kind of like that kayak story that I've told you about before, I think, where I was sure that death yeah. was just like my parents were going to be on shore and just I couldn't turn a kayak over. It was one of those old, you know, like the seal skin kayaks. I've had that before. Not these open kayaks, kayaks are like today. Scary. Yes. Especially when you have no idea. It was just at a cottage. I'm like, oh, I'm going to go out. Doesn't Thought it sound I was like going a, to die. a smart design. Let's, let's stick you inside of a kayak and you can't get out. Well, they needed smart. to be watertight back in the day. Yeah. Oh, that's well. what they did. Yeah. Um, but I, I, the thing is, I, I bring it up because... Obviously, I didn't die in a kayak. Obviously, we didn't die in this car crash. But at that moment, in I thought this might be it. This is how it ends. Um, and I, 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 I got that kind of flash that people... I wouldn't say that my life flashed before my eyes, but let me explain it. In this short moment, like count a million different thoughts were going through my head. After it happened and I kind of got to download, I, I was going, oh my, how did I think of all these things at that second? So first off was obviously, oh my God, just please st straighten out. And then I thought this exit is the worst. And I remember thinking this as I, I like... Damn it, this exit is the worst city engineering in history. And then I thought, I'm never traveling in an old Jeep with crappy felt seats again. And then I thought, oh, okay, we're definitely spinning out. And then I thought, God, just please let us crash somewhere, not into these two lanes. And I thought, oh my God, we're going to crash. And now I just really hope that another car doesn't come and hit us. And then it hit me, okay, I could, I could die right here. I remember that thought going through my head, this could happen. Just <laughs> and the odd thing is... I was oddly ac accepting of it. And, and sometimes in those moments, it's, it's kind of a silly uh, but perfect example of ego. You, you try to almost strike a bargain with God. And I remember thinking, you know what? In this, mo this, really, in this moment, I remember thinking, death would be okay. I just don't want to get hurt. So let me die. That's fine. But just don't let me be crippled or maimed or pried out with the jaws of life on a nightly news in a quadrant view. And then there was a moment when the, the airbags went off. Again, these are mid-90s airbags. Not, they were certainly not soft. It wasn't like being cradled in your love's bosoms at all. These were decidedly <laughs> unfriendly, aggressive airbags. Uh, they went off, causing my head to what I can only imagine was like getting paddled back and forth between the unsupportive bucket seats like a pinball. Just and I couldn't hear anything. Uh, everything went completely white. 
Uh, things slowly kind of came back into view and sounds warped back in. Smoke was coming out of the dash. I think it was the airbag gas. I don't know. I've, I've never had airbags deploy before. Uh, certainly not in a, a, I don't know. It's a 90s model Jeep, I think. Uh, it was total sensory deprivation. And I couldn't really move when I came to. And there was a moment there where I thought, oh, oh crap. Uh, I'm still here, but I can't move. Cars are coming. They're going to hit us. And then I thought, oh, crap, I'm still here. I don't know how bad this is going to be. Um, and I can't move. And we're being upset about it. And thinking about it now, it's pretty disgusting. I'm pretty disgusted that I thought that. And sometimes there are aspects of yourself that you can't really fully understand until you're put in that kind of a scenario. But isn't that the way it, it often goes in life? Many times we'll do anything just to avoid the pain. Sometimes we'd rather take the loss, the finality of defeat, or in this case, I'll take death instead of being in a wheelchair. It sounds silly, but I remember thinking that. We'll take that finality rather than the pain of the struggle. And I think I know why, at least in my case, uh, in trying to deconstruct some of this, because I had a, afterward, there was a lot of <laughs> cornucopia of adrenaline-induced visceral emotive reactions. And many of you watching the show know that I'm not a big fan of cliches, not the Oprah-friendly sound bites, but usually because they're often untrue. And in this case, one that comes to mind we hear a lot is people aren't afraid of being powerless. They're, they're, they're more afraid of being more powerful than they can possibly imagine. So, something along those lines. Neither one of those things is true. No one wants to be powerless. And I can attest to, in that moment in time, uh, I, sort of I was trying to control aspects of the uncontrollable. But I think the reason that uh, many of us will find the out, look for it, take the defeat, over the pain of the struggle is because we all find comfort in the idea that our limitations, our burdens, or even our ultimate defeats are completely out of our control. Right? If I, if I, I remember, if I die, I die. That, it's just my time. That's out of my hands. But if I don't, the ball's back in my court. If I don't die, this might hurt a lot. I might have to go through a really tough climb just to get back to capable. And it's an even harder pill to swallow that sometimes we feel the setback is out of our control, but the recovery is on us. And that's a lot to take. That's hard, but that, and that's life. And you know what, that never changes. Let me give you another example from, from this crash that'll hopefully explain it. Um, again, to explain a lot of the crap to unpack that I'm not proud of as it relates to ego. R right after the accident, uh, my friend Johnny Boy who was driving was shaking. Again, came, my vitals were fine. Uh, his blood pressure was, was through the roof. I could tell he was out of it and in, in the past. I hope he doesn't mind me sharing this. I, I asked him before. Uh, he, I know that he has had absent seizures when he was young, so I was very worried about him because he was, he was shaking. Uh, so our, our wives, Tim and Manny, uh, who work with us, uh, they're fantastic. They, they came and got us off the freeway, went to a nearby McDonald's. Right away, I said, Johnny has to go home, send him home. And I remember telling my wife and the team that I was pretty much fine, and I just needed a moment to, to gather my bearings. Uh, it was a lie. I lied. I did not feel fine. And I said to them that I thought I could still go down to the AIDS walk and do the whole day of filming. Uh, I said, I just needed a minute. It reminds me of that scene, and if you ever saw the film Reg Regarding Henry. Did you ever see Regarding Henry? Yeah. It's where Harrison Ford gets shot. And I think it's the most accurate depiction of uh, the kind of shock in that scenario ever put on screen. Maybe along with Captain Phillips. That was really good, too. But Harrison Ford is at a convenience store getting a pack of smokes, and a guy holding up the store, he just demands his wallet, and he shoots him. And Harrison Ford, doesn't, he doesn't spin over like a, in a spaghetti western, uh, or he doesn't scream in pain. He just holds up his hand, and he, you know, Harrison Ford is, no, wait, wait, wait. Wait a minute, wait a minute. He's just holding, hold, hold on, hold, hold on a minute. And he falls over in shock. And he's bleeding, he was shot. And it's almost more impactful when you watch this because you think that's probably how someone might react. That's how I felt at the McDonald's at that point. I, I was saying, I'm fine. I just need to take a second. But the adrenaline dump stopped. And I'm, I'm pretty sure the airbag boxed my right ear because I couldn't hear. Uh, it, all, all day, it was, it was ringing. Just, just so that, yeah a high pitch ringing like in Saving Private Ryan, I couldn't hear out of my right ear for the rest of the day. And that was my equivalent to saying, well, hold, hold, hold on a minute. I was, I was sore. I was tired. I couldn't hear. I didn't feel fine. You know why I lied? Because of ego. I was thinking of the people depending on me, the people that, that we employ here, the idea that this uh, story would circulate and that they would maybe say, oh man, you know, Stephen was such, such a trooper. He went on down. He finished the segment anyway. And so I lied. And I said it was fine. But I remember when I was saying it, I was looking to my wife. I think we've all done this at some point. I was looking to my wife with the eyes saying, I'm not fine. I'm not fine. Step in here. Call it. Don't let me go. Because I wanted to prove that I could do it. But if my wife said, no, you're going home. Well, guys, that's, that's, out, of my, that's out of my hands. And see, the point here is 
I realized that I wanted my limitations to be set by someone else. I wanted my defeat, or what I perceived as my defeat, to be out of my control, because otherwise people would see me as a quitter. The truth is, in not being honest, in lying to myself and my team about what I could or couldn't control, that was, in a way, that was more of quitting. What would have been less of a quitter's mentality would have been to say, guys, I can't hear you, my neck hurts, I'm tired, I'm going home, we'll live to fight another day. Because that would have been taking ownership the situation myself. But instead, I just wanted to say, no, 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 I can do it, I can do this. And I was looking for anyone else, anyone else, to take the out for me. And that's the mentality of wanting to absolve myself of the responsibility of accepting and recognizing my own limitations. And I was, I was doing it all over again. The, the, just like the crash, the, the bargain with God, if you want to call it. Hey, if I, if I die, that's fine, that's on you. Just please don't let me live and be a vegetable because that's on me and that's gonna suck and it'll be embarrassing. In this scenario, I was saying, hey, if my wife calls it, if, if one of you calls it, that's on you. There's nothing I can do. If you don't, it's on me, and I'm going to have to grit my teeth and bear it. And, and, and it being on me is hard because that means now I've got a decision to make, a decision to recognize my limitations and chart a realistic course of action to recognize what I could not do. Now, here's the, here's the thing. Manny and Tim, um, they decided to call it. They said, no, you're going home because they're good people. And I'll tell you, I felt relief. But that doesn't change that I was lying to myself. They didn't decide for me. I let them decide for me because through ego, I basically abandoned my post. So my challenge to you is this. Think of how often you do this, particularly the young men out there. How often do you look for a reason to lie to yourself, to present this facade of things being out of your control, just to avoid admitting your weaknesses? Have you done it? I, well, I, you know, I guarantee you have. I guarantee you'll do it this week. Could be as severe as what I went through or much more severe than what I, or it could be as simple as, oh, you know, I was, I was late, uh, traffic on the freeway, it's, it's out of my hands, there's nothing I can do. Is it? Do you often find yourself running late? Are you really Superman? Do you make promises you can't keep? Why? And what I want you to do is rather than wait until a crisis occurs so you can throw up your hands and chalk it up to being out of your control, I want you to take inventory right now. What are your limitations? What are your weaknesses? Your quiet time, take a minute, take inventory, because guess what? It's okay. It's okay to have limitations. It's okay to have weaknesses. It's okay to be honest about them. This is where we get it wrong. It's not okay to celebrate them. We don't need to celebrate our weaknesses, but it's good to work on them. And there are many things in life that we can't control, but I think we all want to bear a little less responsibility than we probably should sometimes. Here's something you can't control. You can't control right now recognizing your weaknesses, recognizing your limitations, and accepting the incremental improvements that you can make to correct them. But you can, you, you can never know what that is. This is something, too. We've talked about this a lot with, with knowing what the hard door is, knowing what the easy out is, and, and recognizing. You can never know. You will never know what your potential is, what you're capable of truly accomplishing if you're lying to yourself because of ego. The guy who claims he can do it all and can't, okay, is of far less value than the man who can look you in the eye and say, you know what? I, I know that I can do this because I know that I can't do that. So I can tell you, but any, sh any shadow of a doubt because I know I can't do that, I know I can do this. That's what the world needs more of. That's a real man. Hey there, if you like this video, subscribe to the channel or hit the notification bell. Do it, I'll wait a second. Do you hear that little ding? It actually didn't make a ding sound, I just did it. It happened while my mouth was doing it and you thought it was coming from your computer. Uh, so that's fun. Also, there's some videos playing in these boxes next to me. Go watch those, you might enjoy them. You might not, I don't care.